because I did it. And I'm really impressed with myself, honestly. Uh, okay, unlock. Yeah? Ready? Ready, kids? Lock. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. I got a locking vehicle now. So let me, I'll show you what I did. So, unlock. Lock. Okay, pretty good. Not getting in there. Let's try the driver's door. Nope. So there's my problem. Uh, the actuators, or at least the mechanism for the locking does not work on the driver's and passenger side doors. Um, and what I've seen, at least what I've seen uh, on YouTube is you have to take the door panel off and this mechanism in here, there is a plastic L-shaped white um, actuator deal that is potentially broken or is overextending or underextending where it should be. Um, and so what the, the fix is apparently is you just bend one of the metal rods to not allow it to extend as much. Frank, what are you doing, man? Uh, so I'm going to take the door panel off and we're going to see if we can do something about that because right now nothing locks on this truck, which is kind of a pain in the ass. So I'm going to fill my, this is the alternate intro. This is the success alternate intro. You just watched my other intro where I said, Hey, I'm going to try to fix these locks. Well, actually in this video, I actually do fix my lock for thousands less of, or hundreds, whatever your dealership would quote you for a new actuator and installation in less than five minutes. This is the quickest, craziest fix I could come up with for a terminal problem that really plagues these uh, LR3s and Range Rover Sports of this era. So follow along, we're gonna jump in and uh, I'm gonna show you how to fix it super quick. All right, so now that Frank has joined us for the probably the entirety of this video, uh, what I'm going to do is take the door panel off. And what I've seen is there's a screw behind here. There's a screw here. There's four screws behind the, this door handle. So this apparently lifts off without breaking it. Um, there's a screw here. And there is a screw here. And then I have to figure out what I do with that. But I'll figure that out in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the door panel off. Um, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. So all the door screws are out with only some minor breakage. Um, the next thing to do is after this is pretty loose is use your door trim pry tool, which this one's terrible, it doesn't even work, um, and remove the bottom part first and then the top part. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and try to get that off right now. Oh, okay, I didn't think I was gonna finish this video, but let me, I'm gonna reverse engineer this for you guys because I did it, and I'm really impressed with myself, honestly. Uh, okay, unlock. Yeah, ready? Ready, kids? Lock. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. I got a locking vehicle now. So let me, I'll show you what I did. So, a lot of videos and a lot of things, there's this one guy who shows what the fix is, right? And, and if you, you, the actuator in here, there is a little, white tab that is broken and above that there is a kinked little uh, metal retainer piece and in that video what he tells you to do is bend it down to prevent the other uh plastic white plastic piece from you know over extending or under extending whatever the actuation is that requires it to not work but that requires removing the window and the window motor and all this other shit and I am too lazy to do any of that. So I'm like, there has to be a quick and easy way. So what I did, pay attention. Remove the two, three screws here and I let this uh, actuator, the piece that he shows in the video, uh, I let it kind of freewheel, okay? And I'm gonna remove the screws here and show and zoom in the best I can of what I did to make it work. All right, no light, but I got my flashlight. So, all right, let this kind of free fall or free free float in there. Okay, so now you can see, you get the lens straight. Okay, now you can see what I'm talking about. Do you see the white arm? 
Yep, and do you see that little bent piece of metal? Let me see if I can point to it with a screwdriver, hold on. I don't really have enough hands to do this properly. Apologize for the shaky camera work, but this isn't very easy to do. Okay. This piece, the white one, and the little metal piece, which is above it. Ah, I still can't get a good angle on it. Okay, see it's bent downwards. So that wasn't bent downwards before. What I did was I was able to bend it down about two to three millimeters and that fixed the lock problem. So the way to do that is get your two flatheads, stick one of them, stick one of them through the jam here and brace the actual, the actuator deal with it. All right, so you're bracing it with this one and you stick this one in the top and you wedge it on top of that metal piece and push down. So again, brace with the bottom one, push down with the top one. And again, this will take a couple times to figure out how far you need to push it down. So, you know, push it down, you'll see it move. And then you pull them out, you put a couple bolts in, close the door, lock, unlock, repeat until you get it down enough for it to work. And that's it, that's the fix. Um, again, I saw someone mention it on the forum, but there's been no video on it. I don't really know how to visualize it any better than I, what I just did. Again, I think you can kind of get the idea. It's not that hard, but this is kind of a huge deal for me because this car was a pain in the ass for the past while with not having functional door locks. And I didn't want to put all this stuff, take all this stuff off. So if you've got an LR3 and you've got issues with the door locks, there's your fix. Um, I'm going to see how long it lasts. Hopefully that metal piece will hold, but I'm pretty happy with the results. I hope this video helped you out. Please subscribe and watch the rest of them. And uh, that's all I got for today.